Welcome to today's episode of Histo Helpers. My name is Joseph Nather, also known as Patho Joe. I'm here to walk you through blood and hematopoiesis. For today's lab, you should be able to identify erythrocytes, platelets, and the five types of leukocytes in peripheral blood smears. Identify the different stages of leukocyte development, erythrocyte development, and find megakaryocytes in bone marrow. You will need to identify blood cells in various tissues as it is not just present in blood smears. In lab, you will need to use oil immersion to look at these slides at 100x, so please clean up once you have finished. Let's start on slide 225. This is what's known as a peripheral blood smear, which is stained using a technique known as GEMSA. We'll start by zooming into 100x and identify erythrocytes, also known as red blood cells. As you see, they are the most numerous cell type in the blood. Erythrocytes will be your cellular ruler to define the size of all other cells. In tissue sections like this, they are approximately 7 micrometers in diameter. Mature erythrocytes contain no nuclei, organelles, or cytoplasmic inclusions. They have a unique shape which is not seen on histological sections. They are shaped like biconcave discs which maximizes surface area to volume. This puts a maximum amount of hemoglobin near the red blood cell's membrane. In, in the pale staining center of the cell is what's known as the central pallor, shown here at the blue arrow. If the central pallor becomes larger than two-fifths of the cell, this indicates that the red blood cell does not have enough hemoglobin. This is a condition known as hypochromic anemia. Some younger red blood cells will have residual ribosomes in the cytoplasm. These are known as reticulocytes. Reticulocytes make up about 1% of circulating red blood cells, representing the daily need to replace old cells. To see these cells, you need a special stain. However, if a reticulocytes are found in high levels, they can be indicative of anemia because immature red blood cells will be pushed out into circulation at a higher rate to compensate. Thrombocytes, shown here at the yellow arrows, are produced by mega megakaryocytes, which we will discuss later in lab. Let's now take a look at some leukocytes, commonly referred to as white blood cells. Leukocytes are separated into two categories, those with specific granules and those without. Granulocytes contain specific granules, and agranulocytes do not. However, both have azerophilic granules, also known as nonspecific granules. The contents of specific granules are specific to each cell type. Azerophilic granules contain acid phosphatase, other lysosomal enzymes, and myeloperoxidase that is used to produce reactive oxygen species. Let's first identify some granulocytes. Granulocytes are named for the way their specific granule stains. The most common type of granulocyte is a neutrophil, seen here circled in green. The main function of neutrophils is phagocytosis of bacteria and other small particles. However, they are not macrophages. The nucleus of neutrophils is distinctive in that it has a 3 to 5 lobed nucleus. In females, one of the X chromosomes becomes inactive and ends up as a nuclear appendage known as a bar body, seen here at the tip of the arrow. Neutrophils contain three types of granules, specific, azerophilic, and tertiary. The specific granules contain alkaline phosphatase, collagenase, lactoferrin, and lysozyme. Immature neutrophils are known as stab or band cells, which we will see later in lab. If numerous amounts of stab cells are present in the peripheral blood, that can be indicative of infection. The next type of granulocyte we will discuss are eosinophils, seen here circled in orange. These are much less numerous than neutrophils. The nuclei of these cells are bilobed, and the cytoplasm is stained eosinophilic, almost a salmon color. The main functions of eosinophils are phagocytosis of antigen-antibody complexes, moderation of allergic responses, and reactions to parasites. The specific granules of these cells contain major basic protein, which can, contains a large number of arginine residues, giving the granules their eosinophilic appearance. Basophils are not easily found due to their exceedingly low numbers. We've brought in our basophil wrangler to hunt down one of these elusive creatures. Ah, here it is. 
the elusive basophil circled here in green. They function to mediate the inflammatory response and assist mast cells. The specific granules contain heparin, histamine, and leukotrienes. These are not to be confused with lymphocytes and can be identified by the basophilic granules. For a comparison, a lymphocyte is seen on the lower middle part of the screen. Next, let's examine the agranulocytes, the BNT lymphocytes and monocytes. These are known as agranulocytes because they do not contain specific granules. However, they do contain azerophilic granules. Lymphocytes, shown here circled in blue, are the most common type of agranulocyte. There are two types, B and T, which are indistinguishable with this type of stain. Three groups of lymphocytes can be identified based off their size. Small lymphocytes have a very spherical nucleus full of heterochromatin. They have a very thin ring of basophilic cytoplasm, and these represent the inactive lymphocytes. Medium and large lymphocytes are larger, have more cytoplasm, and less heterochromatin, representing the active lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are the main functional cells of the immune system. You have already seen that they can migrate out of the bloodstream into connective tissue. Monocytes, seen here circled in red, are the less common of the two types of agranulocytes. They are also the largest white blood cell. Monocytes have a characteristic fetus or kidney bean shaped nucleus with an irregular cytoplasm. They are the precursors of all mononuclear phagocytic cells, such as dust cells. Let's now switch to slide 81, a bone marrow smear. Here we will be able to see the development of erythrocytes and granulocytes. Let's start with erythropoiesis, the development of erythrocytes. The first cell in this lineage is a proerythroblast, which we will not identify in lab. The first cell that we will identify is the second cell in development, known as a basophilic erythroblast, shown here circled in red. It is a larger cell that has a very noticeable basophilic cytoplasm due to the extensive amount of ribosomes getting ready to produce hemoglobin. The nucleus is round, magenta colored, and has a lot of heterochromatin. As the cell begins to mature, it becomes a polychromatophilic erythroblast. Two are shown here circled in green. The nucleus looks like it has a checkerboard pattern and is a distinguishing feature of these cells. The cytoplasm will appear much less basophilic than the previous step as hemoglobin begins to accumulate in the cytoplasm. As these cells mature further, their chromatin will become more and more dense. The cells and nucleus will decrease in size. Once the nucleus has fully compacted, the cell is known as a normoblast also called an orthrochromatophilic erythroblast, shown here circled in blue. They are slightly larger than mature erythrocytes and still have a nucleus. The nucleus is very compact and in this example is in the process of being extruded from the cell. The cytoplasm is nearly the same color as in mature erythrocytes. After the nucleus has been expelled from the cell, the cell is known as a reticulocyte, which we discussed earlier, and then finally an erythrocyte. Let's now discuss granulopoiesis, or the development of granulocytes, specifically the development of neutrophils. The first cell we will identify is a promyelocyte, seen here circled in red. They have a basophilic cytoplasm, round nucleus, large azerophilic granules. Promyelocytes are the only cell in this lineage to produce azerophilic granules, with decreasing amounts remaining in the cytoplasm after each subsequent division. The next cell in the lineage is a myelocyte, shown here in blue. The nucleus is flat on one side or slightly indented, which is a defining characteristic of these cells. Specific granules are beginning to form in these cells. Metamyelocytes, shown here in green, have an indentation in the nucleus making a V-shape. There are numerous specific granules which now outnumber azerophilic granules. Band or stab cells, shown here in red, have an elongated horseshoe-shaped nucleus that is usually of uniform width throughout. This constriction is what leads to multiple lobes of the neutrophil. We have now moved to slide 329, which is a different bone marrow smear, 
to get a better look at a megakaryocyte. A megakaryocyte, shown here circled in red, is a very large cell with a multi-lobed nucleus from which thrombocytes break off. This is a thrombocyte breaking off from the megakaryocyte. At this time, I recommend you take a look at the slide on your own for practice identifying these different cell types. I also recommend you watch Dr. Scoville's video on anatomyguy.com for further practice. I hope you enjoyed this look at the blood. That's a wrap for this episode. Please join us next time for an empowering look at muscle with our very own Brock Hatcher. As always, thanks for watching HistoHelper. We're here to help.